All right. Hello, everyone. Again, this is Ethan Shapiro, the climate change realtor, founder and manager of the most innovative real estate corporation ever conceptualized here for Principles Jesus. Episode 16, I want to say. I'm working on the camera angles. As you can see, new studio. Um, I'm going to build up, you know, how I kept adding stuff the last week. Let's let's dive into principles this week. Um, as You know, as I see, I'm a details in progress person, but let's talk principles because it is a blast always. Um, so, Number 4.5, getting the right people in the right roles in support of your goal is the key to succeeding at whatever you choose to accomplish. Right. Here I am, a founder and manager of the most innovative real estate corporation. And what that corporation is a group of people working to achieve a goal. So I, I have three essential roles that I need to fill. And then beyond that, um, there's obviously some I- idealistic uh, positions I'm looking to fill as well. If you were just on the vlog or you guys won't get this till Tuesday, but if you were on the vlog, you can see. So there's founder and manager, which I'm calling the, the chief visionary officer. You guys will see if you read Simon Sinek's work, I'm extremely influenced by Simon Sinek. But um, beyond that, there's the chief administrative officer. There's the chief listing specialist and there's a chief buyer specialist. So the idea of the real estate millionaire real estate agent is you build up this business, you build a team and then you don't have to work in it anymore. So I'm going to stay in there for, for pioneering the vision forward, which is going to be inspiring um, other entrepreneurs to create business oriented solutions to the most pressing challenges of our time. But every week we talk about how you can't see yourself objectively and it's in what and then Ray is a big fan of this idea meritocracy where everyone puts their opinions out there and then we criticize each other. So I really like that as well. Um, I want to make sure there's a very uh, comfortable environment where we work. But what the point I was getting at, let's read it again. Getting the right people in the right roles in support of your goal is the key to succeeding at whatever you choose to accomplish. So I'm going to have someone specialize in selling houses. I'm going to have someone specialize in helping people buy houses. And I'm going to have someone specialize in the glue of the company. So I'm the, I'm the, so there's the way, the best way organizations function is usually it started by a visionary, someone who has an idea. And then there's like a, a task person or a more like systems person. So there's like the leader. And then like, you need your, your partner, your partner in crime. You need someone who is an introvert, if you're an extrovert, you need someone who's left brain. If you're right brain, you need someone who can help you out with your blind spots, right? That's what we talk about in this show is, and the, I always I use the analogy of helping them cli- climb up the hill. They're already at the top of this hill, but you might be, I don't know, already you have the food in your backpack or something. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's so obvious when you think about it, how helping each other, you accomplish more. So you don't want, I don't want another loud mouth visionary Ethan. I do want them in the company, but not in that administrative role. And then the more extroverted people obviously need to be, um, in the sales positions, but that's just a little bit thing to get us started. All right. What's up y'all. So, so it happened again. Um, I missed the letter and as always, it's a very important one. And this episode is now like a whole, (laughs) a whole like TV shows length, unfortunately. But, um, Manage yourself and orchestrate others to get what you want. So that's really, really important to um, manage yourself and then orchestrate others to get what you want. So like managing yourself, understanding that your emotions are going to go up and down, right? You got to realize that you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be infallible. Managing how you can work at your best and then using the strengths of others through your orchestra. So obviously as like me, my leadership, whatever position or my visionary, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be all about me creating the path and using others to obviously help me with my blind spots, but inevitably get us to our goal. So just because I came up with the idea of creating a business oriented solution to climate change, I didn't whatever come up with it, but you know what I'm saying? Um, doesn't mean that I can do it on my own. I'm going to need the help of others with, with positions that I'm not as strong with. For example, someone who understands science better than me, someone who understands social policy better than me. That's going to be very, very essential. God, I'm sorry. I just made this video 16 minutes, but, but it's really important, really important point that I left out. Unfortunately, sorry about that. So now we're actually moving on to big number five, which is learn how to make decisions effectively understand rules for good decision making. And obviously I need to work on this is I, you know, good leaders go with your gut. I I believe, you know, you, you have an intuition, you feel like this is the right thing to do, but having all the information in front of you presented and then making a rational decision based on that is going to be really good. So let's, let's see what Ray has to say about how, um, how to make effective decisions. So 5.1, 
Recognize that the biggest threat to good decision making is harmful emotions, clearly. And number two out of that, decision making is a two-step process. First learning and then deciding. Right. So feeling is good. Emotions are good. You want to have positive emotions always, right? But um, having all the information and looking at it logically is going to be the best way to make a decision. So that's why I think it's good to, to take time to think about things because information takes time to process in your mind. Um, it, it, like I, I know I said I go go with your gut, but like when it comes to like big decisions, like how to systematically organize a corporation, I've taken the whole month. So I started. I don't know if you guys saw on the live Instagram a few weeks ago. I wrote all of my ideas out on the board and tried to make a systematic flow chart. And I've been working all month long in the times I'm not door knocking, trying to figure out what is going to be the best way to achieve my goal. And I'm not going to be the the best person. I'm, I'm struggling to articulate my vision, but I'm not struggling to have vision. You know what I mean? That's why it would be so important to have some sort of like organizational manager, someone who's very good with like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's like, I, here, here's G like, help me get, get there. And this person go A, B, 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 B. So, so the decision-making process, right? Um, let's re- recognize that the biggest threat to good decision-making is harmful emotions. So that's going to be like negative emotions and like being upset about stuff. Cause it'll cloud your vision, but, um, um, it's a two-step process. So you learn, so I'm like, learn, it's like, for me, it's like learning who I am, what are my values, how do I, what do I want to achieve in the world and then deciding how I'm going to do it. So I've been working on that. Uh, relentlessly and I'll continue for probably the next two months, but I, I'm, I think I'm, I'm really there. It's, um, I'll give you guys like this, the sneak preview here. It's, it's 50% of all net commissions donated to organizations dedicated to fighting climate change. Um, carbon air capture companies, grassroots organizations like 350 Colorado or, or citizens climate lobby. Everyone's working. We're all working towards the same goal. We all have the same vision of not dying in a, a over carboned world. Right. And then, um, paying employees so not not commission people like me originally who I'm I'm all commission I want to have and then it's 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 going to be hard I'm going to have to only find people who have my vision to come work for me not not someone who's looking to make as much money as possible selling houses someone who loves working with people helping them achieve their dreams but loves the mission behind the company so where was I going going with this um um first decision is uh man uh where was I going um decisions people company. Sorry. It's not live, but like, you know what I mean? And okay. And then when we get to the point where the sales team is put throwing off more cash than it spends, normally the owner, me would take all the money. But what I'm going to do instead is start hiring like visionaries, not to, to build the sales team, but to let them build their own company. So I'll say, I'll give them a salary of $30,000 and you, you tackle the problem of mass incarceration, right? Something like that. Or you tackle the problem of plastic pollution. You don't have to worry about paying the bills. All you have to worry about is accomplishing your mission. And I'm there now, but I'm, but I'm in like crazy debt. And I just accept that. I don't, I don't care what happens to me anymore. It's only about what happens to my company and my vision. So that's, that's where I'm at. Um, (laughs) I had a note. It's never harmful to hear an opposing view. Right. So, um, someone, it's never harmful to hear an opposing view. I mean, people can confuse you, but over time, you know, the infinite game pursuing long-term growth and success, you know, hearing everyone's point of view. And that's why I believe in discourse and always having conversations with people is very important. Um, 5.2 synthesize the situation at hand. Right. So synthesize, I think that means that's like processing. It's like not just deciding right away. It's what's going on right now. Uh, you're racking up debt every single month, paying for this apartment, paying for the electricity, paying for the internet to post this. Um, but you're also working 75 hours a week, knocking on doors, creating, coming up with new ideas, connecting with new people who might support your vision, putting out content so other people can see it. There's a lot going on every single day in your lives. You're always, even if you are a completely a different type of person from me who's not thinking big at all, there's always information coming into your brain. I talk about being conditioned, how if you, your Instagram's conditioning you, your Facebook's conditioning you, your YouTube algorithm is conditioning you, the television shows that you watch, it's all conditioning you. And your brain is synthesizing all this information. And all I would request is that you guys try to actively be in the driver's seat. I've deleted Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the other bullshit apps that have been on my phone. I have like 
15 apps on my phone now because I, 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 I turn off notifications for everything. If someone texts me, if someone calls me, they want to talk to me. And that's all, that's all I care about. If someone texts me, calls me, I got rid of my email because the email has that dopamine thing where you get a ping and you go and you read it and you, you keep refreshing. None of that. I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be synthesizing something that's not going to prevent, like create my vision. You know what I mean? I'll get better at these guys. You know, it's, I'm, I will trip over my words. It's, it's going to happen, but we're going with principles and I have a bunch of ideas for some future videos. And I, I started off not really wanting to make YouTube videos. And now that I found what I like, I love it. So letter a underneath 5.2. Um, one of the most important decisions you can make is who you ask questions of. And then a note underneath it says listening to uninformed people is worse than having no answers at all. Right. Discourse, discussion, talking to people. Um, okay, let me read it again. One of the most important decisions you can make is who you ask questions of. So am I asking inf Instagram influencer Paul, who has 20 million followers, but only cares about the money, like how to be successful? You know what I mean? Like, do you want to be like Paul? Yeah, maybe you like the idea of like having a lot of followers, but do they, does that, does the person you're asking questions of I call it seeing my vision, but the real, the real thing is, is do you have the same values as the person you look up to? And I talked about how you shouldn't take advice multiple times from someone who's in their sixties, who's still working because they don't understand the principles of financial freedom. And I, I was very interested in all this financial freedom stuff for a very long time. And I mean, I've got the answer already, you know, compound interest over 30 years, you'll make this much amount of money, whatever. I don't care about money anymore, but you want to get advice from someone who wants to do good for others. If you're like me, or you want to get advice from someone who wants to create the best pieces of art in the world. If you're an artist or someone who loves creating things, if you're an engineer or the, an architect, you know, you know, you see what I'm getting at. You, you want, you don't want to ask advice. He said, he said, but he said, no, uh, no advice. Bad advice is better than no advice, but at the same time, you know, all, you're, there's already a, a cesspool of information in your brain and you want to make sure you're putting in stuff that you want to have because you're already having trouble having to process all of it. So I hope this is helpful because read the book, as I always say. Um, letter B, don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everything you hear, especially out of the mouth of Ethan Shapiro. He says a lot of stuff and you really should draw your own conclusions. Letter C, everything looks bigger up close. Everything looks bigger up close and then can be useful to defer a decision until time passes. I don't know if that was a note underneath, but everything looks bigger up close. Take your time to make your decisions. You don't have to take too long if there's a time press. Like I remember I always bring the example of, of thinking about going to Europe at three o'clock in the morning, but my, my feeling, how excited I was about it, got me to just do it. And that's how I've gotten to the position where I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life is I keep ideas come out, whether they're from space, from God, from, from Mary Jane, wherever they come from, if they make me feel eufor euphoric and very happy, I will pursue them aggressively and I'll think about it over the next week, month, whatever. And then you just, you're always unsure because everyone's like, oh, you got to be smart. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. Don't mess up. You got to be perfect. Got to be perfect. But if you follow your, your gut, like I said, you follow your feelings, you're, you're going to have amazing success. If you follow something that makes you happy, of course, I, the, the most miserable, the most worst I've ever felt was, was in Europe. But it got me to where I am today. I, it's, I chased the vision, the, the idea of the euphoria. It, did, it doesn't come tomorrow. It might not come when you envision it coming, but it, it will be there if you follow what feels right. But at the same time, um, you could defer the decision and think about it. Just make sure. Make sure. Um, I'm trying to get these all done. Let's, let's see. Letter D, new is overvalued relative to great. Um, right. I mean, I'll, what do I say? I'm, I'm doing the millionaire real estate agent formula. Um, eight and eight, 33 touch talking to people, following up with them. Um, I could be doing Instagram ads and Facebook ads. I'd love to get there at some point. I could be buying leads off of Zillow, but new is overvalued relative to great. If something has been proven to work fantastically, you don't have to do the new strategy. Just, you just do whatever is awesome. You know what I'm saying? And the last letter of today is don't over squeeze dots. So I think that would, that would be overthinking things too much and going into details. 
um, way too much and, and worrying about all the information that's being thrown at you, having to trying to synthesize everything and focusing on every little detail. Oh, but John and John said this, but Sally said that, and they were conflicting with each other, and I respect them both. Some people can't do the the feeling intuitive thing that I'm talking about, but if you can, if you have felt really great about something and then done it and then been rewarded with greatness after that, lean into that kind of stuff, guys. Follow your vision. Don't just get a job because your mother says you have to get a job. You only have one life to live, or maybe you have infinite life to live. I don't really know, but you who's watching this right now, you're in your one life right now. And if you're waking up and you're hating what you're doing every day, you need to make a change. And it can't be next paycheck. It can't be next quarter. It can change right now. That doesn't mean you physically stop going to work, but it means that you change your mindset and realize I'm going to take control of my own life. All this information that's being thrown at me, I'm going to start synthesizing in a way that leads me to my vision. And you guys may not be able to get what I'm saying, but some of you definitely do. And, and I'll try and make it as clear and clear as I can over the weeks 15 minute principles episode. I'm going live on Instagram. Apologize for the long episode. Um, they're going to keep getting better. I promise. Stay happy. Stay positive. Stay frosty. 2012. I love you all. And I'm going on Instagram. Yee yee.